Hi. <laughs> um, how do I uh, get my kids to bed on time and stay in the vortex? <laughs> yeah. By letting them choose what on time is. Oh, all right. Because it's sort of like getting them to bed is when my freedom begins. Yeah. <laughs> right. And your freedom feels like their bondage. <laughs> right. And we know we get the whole thing. But if you think about why you want them, I want them to be rested. I want them to feel good. Mm -hmm. I want them to connect with the whole that they are. I want them to be happy in their lives. I want them to know the ultimate of their well-being. I want them to thrive. I want them to be joyful. I want them to feel the fullness of who they are. I want them to be happy. I want them to now we're not saying I want them to go to bed, right? I want them to be tuned in. I want them to rest. Well, I want them to feel comfort. I want them to feel good about their lives as you visualize as you focus on your children and you see them in the vortex and you see them awakening frisky and rested and happy everything else follows that you see and trauma before bedtime is not what precedes all of these things that you want for them it's not good for them and it's not good for you either you see right. something that really helps is letting your children know what you expect but if your expectation of their behavior is contrary to your desire, then you've got split energy and you are not influential. So you're working against yourself. Your expectation makes them want to stay up while your desire is you want them to be rested. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of cleaning up your vibration about it. And the best way to do that when you're in the vortex, haven't you noticed when the kids are happy and when they're feeling good and, and when there's not something that you're worried about, like school the next day or something, and it's later than usual, but it just doesn't matter. And everybody's having a good time and bedtime's sort of a non-issue. You. We want it to be like that all the time. Not that we don't think it's a good idea for them to be rested, mm -hmm. but that feeling of no angst about it. It's like mm -hmm. conveying to them early on, I trust you to make wise decisions for yourself, you see. Mm -hmm. And so as you speak about how you like rest and how your body likes to be rested, as you speak about how feeling good is really important to you and how much you've discovered it's easier to feel good when you are well rested. And haven't you all noticed that when you work too hard or when you work too long, it's harder to be in the vortex. You want to pamper yourself, but for children who are already all full of energy, it almost works in opposition. Bedtime to them feels like the opposite of the vortex where bedtime to you feels more like the vortex. We would have a conversation with them about it. We would tell them what your real motive is for them to be rested. You see, and most of all, as a parent, you want to convey to your children your belief in their ability to guide their world well. And when you're at odds with them about behavior, what you're actually saying with your rules and with your curfews is, I don't trust you to make good decisions for yourself. Therefore, I will do for you what you are unable to do for yourself. And then you don't know when to stop doing that. You see where the earlier, the better that you can convey to them your trust in them knowing. So if they say, can I stay up? We would, if we were standing in your physical shoes, say, you know, I'm going to leave that up to you because when I think about my own sleep, these are the things I want. I want to feel good in the morning and I want to really give my body the benefit of rest, but you're young and frisky. You'll probably feel good if you stay up all night. So go for it. Go for it. I can't choose for you. I used to stay up all night and not even know it. You might say, I used to rarely sleep and hardly need to. And then I would catch up. So I can't choose for you. I don't want to choose for you. I want you to choose for you. But what I want is for you to feel really good in the morning. So you just feel around until you figure out what your best sleep patterns are. And I will completely support you in whatever those sleep patterns are and then do it. It's the best gift you could ever give to your kids. I believe in your ability to choose what's best for you.
Oh. Um. Now, if they're not rested and if they are ornery, now you can have a conversation about that. You can say, well, I know you think you're choosing, but the evidence, I know you, you, you're telling me that it was the best choice, but you don't seem happy. So I can tell that you're out of sync with you. So you need to adjust something. I'm just saying, say to them, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you might want to adjust it a little bit because the primary intention is not really being satisfied. Do you know that? Oh, this is such an important thing to know about slumber. The only thing that messes up your life experience is resistance, which is contradictory energy, mm -hmm. contradictory thought, contradictory to who you really are, contradictory to the source within you and contradictory to your own intentions that you've carved out of life. That's the only thing that makes you sick. It's the only thing that wears you down. It's the only thing that gives you a bad attitude It's the only thing that messes up your life in any way is being out of sync with who you are not absence of sleep being out of sync with who you are now sometimes they go together because when you're out of sync with who you are you're depriving yourself of some sleep too but sleep is not what people think that it is it is not the solution alignment is the solution you see and that's why you can get involved in a painting and or or in anything and get so involved in it jerry and esther find themselves sometimes at two or three o'clock in the morning not even knowing what time it is because they are so joyously involved in whatever project they are involved in you see yeah. time doesn't matter and neither does sleep it's resistance and alignment that matters mm. so you do yourself a disservice and you do your children a disservice when you teach them that they need eight hours or ten hours of sleep oh, because right. they don't need that much sleep what they need is less resistance and the reason that you think that the sleep is the answer to that is because while you're sleeping you're less resistant right you say okay. you are resting while you're sitting here in these chairs and you felt so much invigoration today as we were tuning you to the frequency of who you are, you see. Mm -hmm. And that's what your children want. And so this battle that parents have with their children about sleep, of programming them that they need so much sleep is really a disservice to the children because mm -hmm. it's teaching them something that is not accurate. It's teaching them that the path to happily ever after is sleeping when the mm -hmm. path to happily ever after is alignment, mm -hmm. you see. Yeah. And how much of this precious exposure to this physical life do you really want to sleep away? All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.